start with let us say that initially what did i say initially the electrons are moving randomly and then we say that they have <coughs> thermal velocity such that the average thermal velocity is zero so that means initially when i say initially i means before applying the external electric field initially what happens random motion okay uh, such that the average thermal velocity is equal to zero so let us suppose that if the average if the thermal velocity of the electrons are v1 v2 v3 and so on till vn if we assume that there are n electrons in that case if these are the values of thermal velocities then the average thermal velocity is equal to zero <coughs> right now let us suppose that if we apply an external electric field e then what happens let us suppose that this is my conductor so this is of length l and we say that a potential difference v exists between this let us suppose this is my electron so the electron starts moving towards this if this is positive and this is negative so the electron moves towards the positive end so this v is nothing but the potential difference between the ends because this is positive this is negative so this is this v represents the potential difference between the end now we already know that there is a relationship between electric field e and the potential difference v so e can be written as v divided by l because we know that electric field is gradient of potential <coughs> so e will be equal to v by l now under the influence of this external electric field e what happens each electron experiences a coulomb's force because whenever you apply electric field whenever electric field comes into play coulomb's force also comes into play so each electron experiences coulomb force so what is that force given by that force coulomb force f is equal to q into e so here q is nothing but charge on electron so this becomes e into e so this is the force experienced by each electron <coughs> so what would be the acceleration of each electron acceleration of electron will be equal to force per unit mass because force is equal to mass into acceleration so this will be equal to e into e divided by m where m e is mass of electron right so this will be the acceleration of electron so as soon as electric field is applied the electron will get strongly attracted towards the positive terminal and they will start moving very fast and they will accelerate so the acceleration of the electron is given by this expression that is minus e into e divided by mass of electron but <coughs> the gain in velocity due to this acceleration is lost during collision of the electron with the positive ion so gain in velocity due to acceleration is lost during collision with positive ions right that's what i explained you in the previous slide with positive ions so what will happen during this collision the positive ion will also experience a force but they will not move because they are heavy because their mass is much more as compared to electron so what will happen after the collision what would be the velocity of an electron let us consider any one electron velocity of an electron will be equal to what initially the velocity of this electron was v1 let us suppose right now we are considering the first electron so initially the velocity was v1 but now what will be the velocity it will be nothing but we know that from kinematic equation v is equal to u plus at where u is the initial velocity a is the acceleration and t is the time so 
final velocity will be equal to initial velocity that is v1 which is the thermal velocity this was the initial velocity plus what is acceleration <coughs> acceleration is nothing but this acceleration let us call this acceleration as a so this will be acceleration a into time taken let us call this time taken as tau 1 similarly the velocity of second electron will be equal to v2 plus a tau 2 and so on so on for so on and so forth for all the other electrons so what will be the average of these velocities average of these velocities will be equal to nothing but the drift velocity because as I told you drift velocity is nothing but the average of the velocity gained by each of the electron. So average of these velocities will be your drift velocity. Let us denote drift velocity as Vd. This D denotes drift. So drift velocity will be equal to V1 plus A tau 1 <coughs> plus V2 plus A tau 2 plus v3 plus a tau 3 plus so on divided by how many electrons are there there are n electrons so divided by n so this is how we will calculate the average of drift velocity right therefore the drift velocity will be equal to what will be this this will be nothing but v1 plus v2 plus v3 plus so on you take all v's together plus a into tau 1 plus tau 2 plus tau 3 plus so on divided by n now this can be written as v1 plus v2 plus v3 plus dot 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 divided by n plus a into tau 1 plus tau 2 plus tau 3 plus dot 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 divided by n. Now what is this term? This term is nothing but the average of the thermal velocities of all the electrons and as we started this expression here I showed that this is equal to 0. So from this we can say that this term will be equal to 0. So we are left with A into tau where <coughs> Tau is nothing but the average of the time taken by all the electrons before it collides with some positive ion, right? Because what is tau 1? Tau 1 is after what time the electron collides with the positive ion, right? Similarly, tau 2 is the time after which the second electron collides with the positive ion. Therefore, we say that this tau is nothing but the average time collapsed since each electron suffered collision. So what is this? This is average time collapsed since, ele since each electron suffered collision. Right? Therefore, we get drift velocity is equal to A into tau. Now what is this acceleration in, in the slide we in, in the previous slide we found acceleration as minus E into E divided by M. Therefore the expression for drift velocity is given by this expression. So the drift velocity is directly proportional to the electric field which is applied. It is directly proportional to the average time collapsed between collisions and it is inversely proportional to the mass of electron. So this is how we calculate drift velocity for electrons. Now we will look at the combination of resistors. How do we combine how do we combine resistors in circuits? Basically we will use these resistors at the end of the day in some electric circuits. Right? So how do we combine it in circuits? We have studied now this 
will be easier for you to understand because you have already studied about the combination of capacitors so it is also uh, the resistor combination is also on similar lines to capacitors with some major differences of course so the resistors can be combined in two ways similar to capacitors first is a series combination and the second one is a parallel combination so what happens when the resistors are connected in series we will have a look at that now what happens when the resistors are connected in series series means one end of the res end of one resistor starts the other resistor again the end of the second resistor starts the third resistor and so on this is how the resistors are connected in series now in a circuit diagram a resistor is always represented like this like for example for capacitor we use this symbol similarly for resistor we use this symbol okay so the resistors are connected in series in this way so what happens in a series combination basically in a series combination the same amount of current flows through the circuit that means the same amount of current flows through all the resistor however the potential difference across each resistor is different let us suppose if the potential difference across this is v1 this will be v2 this will be v3 and so on right so that means what we can say v1 is nothing but i into r1 according to ohm's law that is potential difference across resistor r1 is current flowing through r1 that is i into resistor that is r1 similarly v2 will be equal to i into r2 similarly v3 will be equal to i into r3 and so on so therefore the total voltage v that is the total voltage between these two points let us suppose these two points are a and b so the total voltage between a and b is v in that case this v will be equal to v1 plus v2 plus v3 plus so on till vn now we can write this total v as i into r equivalent that is the equivalent resistance of the circuit if we forget that we have so many resistors if we replace so many resistor with one resistor r equivalent then we can say that the total potential difference across the circuit is equal to current flowing through the circuit that is i into the equivalent resistance of the circuit so this will be equal to i r1 plus i r2 plus i r3 plus so on till i r n so therefore we can write r equivalent is equal to r1 plus r2 plus r3 so on till rn that means if resistors are connected in series then the equivalent resistance of the circuit is equal to the sum of the resistors in the circuit now this is opposite to that of capacitors in case of capacitors when capacitors are connected in parallel in that case the equivalent capacitance of the circuit is equal to the sum of the capacitance right so this is a major difference between resistors and capacitors so please do not get confused now let us look at the scenario when the resistors are connected in parallel so here what will happen when the resistors are connected in parallel these are your two terminals say a and b in this case the potential difference across each of them will be v so the potential difference across each of them would be the same right because the potential difference between a and b will be the same as these two points will be the same as these two points will be the same as these two points and so on but the amount of current flowing through them will be different let us suppose through this it is i1 through this it is i2 and through this it is in so what is the total current flowing through the circuit that will be i which is equal to i1 plus i2 plus i3 so on plus in now from ohm's law we can write i is equal to v divided by r equivalent that is the equivalent resistance of the circuit this is equal to v by r1 plus v by r2 plus v by r3 and so on till v by rn so from this we can write 1 by r equivalent is equal to 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 till rn so therefore when the resistances are connected in parallel in a circuit then the total or equivalent resistance of the circuit is given by this expression right so these are the two 
possible combination of resistors. Now we will look at several scenarios. I will try to solve as many problems as I can to show you how do we calculate equivalent resistance of complicated circuits. So we, I will end this chapter with a calculation of equivalent resistance and in the next lesson we will talk about analyzing electric circuits, calculating current, voltage, resistance. I mean we will take, take up things all together. So now we will start solving different problems to calculate uh, the equivalent resistance of circuit and I will also tell you certain tricks which we follow or which we use to make the calculation of equivalent resistance simpler. We will now look at a variety of problems and circuits and we will see how do we calculate equivalent resistance of a circuit. So basically uh, I will show you different kinds of circuits where you have numerous resistances and will tell you different tricks and methods to calculate the equivalent resistance of the circuit. So this is our first problem where you can see that there are three resistances 7 ohms, 5 ohms and 4 ohms respectively. And I ask you to calculate the equivalent resistance of this circuit between points A and B. So how do you calculate it? If you look at it, since these are the two terminal points A and B. So that means a potential difference exists between A and B. So a current, let us say some current I will flow through this arm. But when this current reaches this point, what do you think? How will the current get divided? If you look at it, this 4 ohms is in air. This other end of 4, four ohm is not connected to any particular terminal or any particular point. So that means this 4 ohm resistance is hanging in air. So do you think current will flow through this resistance? No, it will not because for current to flow, that means for the electrons to flow, they will flow towards something, right? When we apply some electric field, what happens? Our charges flow towards the positive end. But here it is in air. So the current will not flow through this 4 ohm resistance. That means no current will flow through this arm. So the entire current will flow through this 5 ohm resistance. So this is how the current will flow. So that means what is the equivalent resistance of the circuit? Since current is not flowing through this 4 ohm, so 4 ohm does not contribute to equivalent resistance. So my equivalent resistance will be 7 ohm and 5 ohm. That means my circuit will look somewhat like this. 7 ohm and then 5 ohm. So this is A and this is B. So this is 7 ohm, this is 5 ohm. So what is it? If you make this wire straight, I mean if you keep this point A here, it is equivalent to point A and point B, right? I mean it is just that the shape of the wire is in this way. If it, is, it had it been a straight wire, it is nothing but series combination of 7 ohms and 5 ohms. That means the equivalent resistance is nothing but the sum of the two resistances because they are in series. So the equivalent resistance of the circuit is 12 ohms. Now let us suppose if you tell me, because in, in this case also note this point, the current always follow the easiest and the shortest path. Right? Now let us <coughs> suppose had there been any other, had this 4 ohm been connected to this point, in that case, this 4 ohm would also have played a role because in that case, the current I would have got divided into two parts, I1 and I2, right? So that is how we solve this problem. Now let us look at the next.